quick, quickly. There's no time for an intro. I'm Rusty and this is one tip for every single boss on Hollow Knight. Make sure you have some good spell charms equipped prior to the fight. Once the broken vessel stands in the middle of the arena and cascades multiple blobs around you, you can retreat to one of the corners of the screen and spam Vengeful Spirit from a safe distance. For the Brooding Moloch, you might be fooled into thinking it's not that safe to heal because the arena doesn't give you a lot of space. The Moloch has a leap attack where he jumps once at you, and then a second time back towards the center of the arena. Position yourself to where the Moloch misses the first leap, and you're standing near one of the corners of the arena. Knowing his second jump obviously won't hit you, start healing immediately as the Moloch touches the ground on the first leap, and you should heal successfully every time. Despite this technically being a 2v1 battle, most of the time one half of the duo is standing back while the other is performing their signature nail art. If you see one of them charging an attack or something, chances are the other one isn't doing anything, so take heavy advantage of this. For the collector, make sure you have your nail upgraded to at least the coiled stage. All enemies he throws at you from above will die in a single hit, and then you can use the soul you get from these enemies for a quick vengeful spirit once he comes back down. The Crystal Guardian is all about limiting your movement, so don't feel like you have to move around all the time. Sometimes dodging everything on the screen may just be as simple as jumping over it. If you don't get overwhelmed by all the lasers, you can outlast him pretty easily. During his second phase, the Dung Defender will become much more aggressive, and he'll repeatedly burrow himself into the ground and spring forth. He will do this attack six times, and if you have good timing with spells, you can blast him with Vengeful Spirit each time he burrows back into the ground to get some extra damage. With Shade Cloak, the knight can simply dash through Elder Who's projectile attacks outright instead of trying to find space between them. For the False Knight, the boulders that drop as he smashes the ground with his mace can be deflected back at him, making each of his phases much quicker. Hitting the armor of the failed champion doesn't give you any soul, so make sure you're topped off before entering the fight. It's recommended that you keep the maggots around his body alive so you can dream nail them to top off your soul gauge prior to entering the dream realm. Literally just stand there. I don't have a tip for this one. Just stand there and spam spells until he shrivels up and dies. There's a lifeblood cocoon right above Galleon's grave that buffs your health bar with an extra three masks. Please use it. There is no reason you shouldn't know this is here. Shadow Dash is great for this fight because you can use it to dodge through one of the two smaller scythes Galleon summons during his last phase. Prioritize the beast over the actual warrior herself. You can still do damage to the beast during its rolling attack, and using Descending Dark as the beast is rolling towards you gives you some iframes, allowing you to dodge right through the attack on top of the damage you're already doing. During Gorb's final phase, the swords he summons around him can get overwhelming and a little hard to dodge. Spin the first couple phases with a close range approach and then spam spells at him from afar to finish him off. Zote will occasionally spit out some of his Zotling friends to help him during battle. He stays still during this entire animation, making it a great opportunity to sink in as much damage as possible while spending the rest of the fight focusing on dodging and evading. Also, and this is true for any dream boss, fragile charms do not break upon death, so use them to your heart's content. Grim is one of the game's most evasive bosses, so focus on doing as much damage as you can in the least amount of time possible. A good window of time to attack is during his Flame Bats attack. Charge up a nail art prior to this, dodge through the bats and then hit Grim with a Dash Slash, and then immediately follow up with a Vengeful Spirit. Both of these attacks should land well before he teleports back off screen. For the Gruz Mother, wait until she bounces up and down the arena and time your nail strikes accordingly to where you're getting in one hit for every time she hits the ground. The Hive Knight is a much lighter boss than most of the others, meaning slashing normally with your nail will scoot him away from you just enough to be out of range. Slash upwards underneath him instead to prevent this from happening and to keep your pressure consistent. When the Hollow Knight begins stabbing himself with his nail, all damage to the boss will be reduced to one. And this includes both nail and spell attacks, so don't worry about dealing damage during this behavior and only focus on healing if you need it. Also, dream nailing him for soul works just as well. When staggered, Hornet will immediately return on the offensive when struck again, so use this opportunity to get in some extra damage. Either slash with your nail and follow up with a vengeful spirit, or of course you can always take the time to heal if you need it. Basically, do exactly what you did for the first fight. Just do everything faster. 
The Lost Kin, and this is the same for Broken Vessel as well, takes a good amount of knockback from the knight's attacks and spells. This means your Vengeful Spirit spell has a pretty decent chance of hitting twice, and even more so when paired with the Shaman Stone charm to increase the size of the spell's hitbox. The Mantis Lords can perform all of their own attacks completely independent of one another, which sometimes makes it hard to predict what exactly you need to dodge. The Lords will also stay put on the wall for a couple seconds after their boomerang-like attack, allowing you to get in a couple extra hits or fire off an extra spell. Use Shape of Un to heal during his Nail Barrage attacks. Otherwise, just save your soul for using spells when Markoth is rotating his shield. Stay underneath Marmu and up Slash as much as possible to keep her juggled in the air, using charms like Mark of Pride and Quick Slash. Spells knock her back just as much, meaning spells like Howling Wraiths work just as good, if not better, for damage output. He- he's a bush. He's just a bush. He's- he's a bush with a face for fuck's sake. If you get killed by this guy, just put the game down and play something else. Prior to the fight, pick one or two of his attacks to capitalize on and only deal damage when those attacks occur. Spend the rest of the fight focusing on dodging whatever he throws at you. I always capitalize on his bats attack because he's vulnerable for much longer than usual. Dash towards him quick enough, you can squeeze in both a nail art attack and vengeful spirit, kinda like you did with the original Grim, and his flame pillar attack also leaves him open to howling wraiths. Stand in the exact center platform of the arena, and the gliding spirits are most likely not going to hit you. Always return to this platform if you need to heal. Most players already know about the platform cheese, but getting in damage can get really easy depending on which charms you have equipped. As Nosk is running towards the ledge, upstrike him and then immediately fire a vengeful spirit behind you. Also, Nosk's infection globs aren't that good at leading your location, so just inching forward slowly and taking a couple steps each time he drops a glob will ensure that you almost never get hit by it. Don't worry about lowering the health of both Oblobbles at the same time. Defeating one gives the remaining Oblobble a spike of health and an extra burst of aggression. So just focus on one and take him down immediately. You could also line them both up and then use the Howling Wraith spell to damage them both at the same time. Having Quick Focus equipped means you can heal in between every one of Shio's attacks, which is something you normally wouldn't be able to do without the charm. Spell charms also work great because Shio moves around a lot and is constantly vulnerable to at least one of your spells. It's really just a matter of getting proper timing. The Descending Dark spell comes with a pretty big window of invincibility frames, meaning you can time this spell to avoid just about any of the pure vessel's attacks, as well as do some decent damage in the process. Although this shouldn't be done completely in lieu of dodging, and should only be used if you absolutely can't dodge an incoming attack any other way. Be mindful of the cooldown on your Shadow Dash because you'll need it to dash through the Wall of Light attack. There's a window of time for you to heal right after she casts the third and final Eye Beam attack. Panic healing is extremely costly during this fight, so don't get psyched out by low health, and instead just focus on moving around any attacks in progress before healing. The Sisters of Battle intro shout does not stagger the knight, giving you a pretty large opportunity to heal up after you've defeated the first mantis. Alternate between jumping and shadow dashing to evade the sisters effectively. The sisters appear and disappear from the screen incredibly fast, meaning there's a strong chance that you can use Vengeful Spirit to line up multiple sisters with one cast. Sharp Shadow is great against Sly during both phases. The extra distance helps during his frenzy phase when he's practically untouchable otherwise, and with proper spacing you can Shadow Dash through the entire horizontal hitbox of Cyclone Slash if need be. Although not recommended, unless you've no other option, or I guess you're just going for style points. You can get a pretty decent amount of upgrades from other locations before ever needing to fight the Soul Master. Use the Lantern to get into Crystal Peak, get the Long Dash, and use it to acquire the Pale Ore at the top of the Kingdom. By doing this, you can get the Channeled Nail prior to the fight with Soul Master, making the fight go a hell of a lot quicker than usual. Stand at the center of the arena when the Soul Tyrant summons his spiraling orbs, and you will almost never get hit by them. The Soul Tyrant teleports around a lot quicker than his non-dream counterpart, so stacking Soul Catter and Soul Eater are a great way to make sure you have a soul reserve at all times. When the Tyrant sweeps across the ground, jump over him and immediately fire a Vengeful Spirit in his direction, and it will almost always hit twice. This dude is basically just a fat mantis lord. If you took care of that fight, you can take care of this one. Honestly, I'm only listing this as a boss because the Hall of Gods has him listed as one as well for some reason. But if we're being honest, this guy is really nothing but a fat soul battery. 
If you're good at melee combat, equip some good melee charms and use your shadow dash to dodge inwards and through the traitor lord's attacks. This keeps you at a constant close range with the traitor lord which also lessens the likelihood of him using his projectile or shockwave attacks. Use the Dream Wielder charm and Dream Nail to gain soul off of Umu when he's invulnerable. At this point, you can just wait for Quirrell to slash him and then just spam Howling Wraiths. Downstrike over him when he swoops down and across the arena, and then launch a Vengeful Spirit in the direction he's going for some extra damage. Should reduce the duration of the fight down to like 15 seconds, honestly. This one can be a little tough, but if you're really good at tracking how much damage you've done to each of the Watcher Knights, you can pace out the fight in a way where you rarely ever have to face more than one at a time. As one knight dies, the animation time for another one to join the battle takes a pretty long time. Also, yes, the chandelier. Just, yeah, there's no reason you shouldn't know this is here. Using Vengeful Spirit as White Defender tosses out Dung Balls can destroy the ball as well as damage the boss himself. Additionally, his Frenzy attack halfway through the battle can be timed with Vengeful Spirit casts as he burrows his way back into the ground. Any strategy you had for Dung Defender will reasonably work here too. When Winged Nosk swoops downward across the arena, you can apply the same strategy you did for Venge Fly King and Pogo on its head. End the Pogo with a Vengeful Spirit cast in the direction it's gliding for maximum damage. If you need time to heal, step off of the arena to mitigate the risk of being hit by one of Zero's floating swords, as you'll be just enough out of range for it to be safe. Hmm. Oh, brilliant. Ah, shit. There's no time for an outro either. Quick, quick, in the video!